Okay, um, my my clock shows four o'clock, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, my name is Michael Drake. I am uh, the assistant state engineer that manages the, manages the adjudication section, and uh, we we have a few team members that are here today that um, are here to help answer questions. Um, and uh, so we're 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 happy to be here. And this uh, this marks the end of a long process. I know some of you guys have been in here. That this adjudication has been going on a while, so we're we're glad to be here um, at the end, and uh, we have a little bit more to do, some objection resolution, I presume, uh, but we're 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 glad to be at this key benchmark. Um, so uh, we're we'll go through a short presentation here. Uh, the, the, this meeting is being recorded. We'll make it available online um, after afterwards on YouTube. And uh, you can find those links on um, on the the Division of Water Rights website. Um, you can also just go search us um, out on YouTube. We have a, a channel, uh, Utah Division of Water Rights, and and uh, you should be able to find it find it there. Um, so a uh, little bit of we 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 are kind of our we we have a tight schedule here at, at this building. So we're uh, I'm going to try and move through this this kind of uh, this regimented section pretty quickly. Uh, the, the city would like us to uh, to vacate this, and and uh, there's another um, party that's going to come and use it. I'm I'm not singing and playing the piano here, so if that's what you were here for, that's not what I'm what, what I'm going to do. Uh, so that's clearly for the the next group. So what we can do, I know you know a lot of times the question and answer session is the most important part. Um, have a chance to talk to us about what's going on. Um, the city has offered up the, uh, I guess it's the council chambers across the hallway. And so we'll go ahead and take it over there um, afterwards. Um, we kind of need to be out in about an hour. Um, I don't think we'll have a problem with that, but um, we'll stick around as long as we need to answer any, qu any questions. For those that are online, maybe that, that does kind of get in the way of asking questions there. Um, there are several different ways you can reach us. Let me just advance the slide so you can you can see probably the most useful one, and that is that email address that you see at the bottom of this slide, um, water rights underscore adjudication at utah.gov. And um, that gets forwarded to uh, my email address, and, and uh, then we can forward that to um, a lot of the other staff members we have here too, and so we can get your questions answered. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's any other housekeeping items. Uh, so this is, this is our, our, our agenda. We'll, we'll quickly cover um, the adjudication process. We'll talk about the proposed determination and hydrographic survey maps. Um, we'll, we'll go through some of the details that we, we needed to, that we formulated as we pr uh, prepared this proposed determination. Uh, we'll run through what a proposed determination looks like how you interface with it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what do you do now if, if, if there's something wrong in your recommendation. We'll talk about how to file an objection. And we'll review a hydro, typical hydrographic survey map. And, and then, as I indicated, we're, we're here to, to answer questions. Um, so it, if we could, you know, I, I typically am, I'm a little bit more flexible on this, taking questions, but given that we're under such a tight uh, time crunch. I'll um, just blaze right on through these slides, and we can address any questions you have. So maybe make a note if you have a question on a particular slide, and we can we can come back to it. I guess maybe if there's not, are there any like it is being taped? Yes, it will be. Yes, yep, yeah. So it'll be posted on YouTube. There will be links on our website. You can also find our YouTube channel. Um, uh, Utah Water Rights, U Utah Division of Water Rights, um, and it, it'll be posted there. So, yeah, great, great question. All right, any other housekeeping? I'll, I'll maybe I'll if there's any questions as far as just housekeeping type items, I'll I take those right now. Anyway, everything does that seem kind of straightforward? Okay. All right. So, um, what is this thing? What is this general adjudication that we've been doing? Um, it is an action in state district court. The purpose of it is to determine water rights. Uh, the adjudication process joins all water users and the state engineer and federal agencies 
into a, a court case. And the, the objective of that court case is to determine water rights. And, and so that was, that's what was commenced um, a little while back. We'll, we'll look at some of the dates. The entire thing is governed by Title 73, Chapter 4 of Utah State Code. So we've been following that as we've been moving through the process. Um, and, and why do we do it? Well, uh, and this, uh, the Little Cottonwood area is a prime example of why we do this, is, is so that we can bring all of the claims onto the, the permanent records of the state engineer so that we can manage all water rights in the state uh, comprehensively. And um, what that means here is uh, a lot of the Little Cottonwood area functions on the Little Cottonwood Decree, which was an early 20th century uh, judicial decree that established flow rates for different parties. And um, it, like I say, established flow rates, but an interesting facet in this area is that that decree didn't really establish beneficial use amounts. And that makes it a little complicated as we try and manage them in, um, in the water rights system. And so uh, we bring all of those, those decreed rights into the adjudication in addition to all the other water rights we have. We, we identify pre-statutory claims. So in the state of Utah, if you water to use prior to statehood or prior to um, Utah water law, um, that came in 1903, as you can see up there, um, then you have what's called a pre-statutory water right. And, and, and that generally applies to surface water rights. For underground um, water rights, if you establish that use prior to 1935, then that too would be considered a pre-statutory water right. We also bring the federal government in to the adjudication. And, and so there is federal uh, participation in this adjudication. There is a, what's called a federal reserved water right for the Little Cottonwood Canyon. The uh, US Forest Service manages the land, um, a lot of the land up there. And, and so they made a claim for a federal reserve water right. Um, and, and so they've been brought into this adjudication. Um, why else do we do it? Um, it we, we, we adjudicate to prevent this multiplicity of lawsuits. We try and condense that all into one, uh, one lawsuit, settle all the issues, and then move along, get out of the way, and let, let the water users um, do what they need to do. Um, we, we also do look at, uh, look at non-use, or, or we may potentially forfeit water rights that are not being used. And so that did happen in a few cases in this adjudication, at least as far as what we've recommended to the court. And so we may remove water rights or reduce them if we didn't find that, that those water rights were being used. And then finally, the objective is to get a comprehensive decree. That's kind of the, the finish line of an adjudication. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's that final goal, and that's what we're working for. Okay, so what you see on the screen is the adjudication process that we've been working our way through. Um, and I'm going to populate some dates now that... Um, that talk about when we started each of these. Um, step number one was a petition. Um, this, uh, the Little Cottonwood subdivision is part of a much larger adjudication called the Utah Lake Jordan River adjudication. Um, and that was started with the petition to the, to the state court or the district court in uh, 1944. And it was only in 2018 that the state engineer defined this area, the Little Cottonwood in, as part of, of a larger effort to do the east side of Salt Lake Valley, and we commenced this particular subdivision. And so this, is, this would have been when you got the, um, the initial mailing, uh, the, the notice of commencement and, and the summons. And uh, uh, scary, scary things to receive in the mail, I know. Um, I live just south of here, and, and I got it too. And, and everyone at church, uh, knowing that I worked at the division, pulled me aside and said, what is this? What are we doing here? Um, so I'm sure you have that same level of shock. Um, so that was followed by a, a public meeting. There was a period to file um, water user claims, which you guys all part participated in. There was the list of unclaimed rights. So we go and we compare our records against all the claims we received. And if there was a water right that was not claimed, we put that on the list, filed it with the court, gave 90 days to object. And if no one objected, then those water rights were abandoned. So the thinking there is that these are rights that no one has any interest in, no one filed a claim on, so we're going to get those out of the way so we can focus on the rights that people are interested in. So there was a public meeting, there's a final summons, um, like say objections on the list of unclaimed rights, 
Since um, 2019, uh, we've been investigating um, all of the claims we received. And um, it, you know, a couple, of course, it took us a little, little while. Uh, you had COVID sprinkled in between there. That kind of slowed us down. Had some staffing issues. Uh, but we filed the proposed determination for this subdivision in, in, on January 26, uh, 2024. That started a 90-day clock in which if you disagree with the recommendations, um, you need to file an objection with the court. We'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. Uh, so that date is April 25th. That's the key date. Um, if if we need to file an objection, that's when that's when it's got to come in. All right. So moving along, how do you access it? Hopefully by this point you have had the opportunity to to find it. Um, we sent a a mailing to all of the water right holders and all of the claimants, uh, describing describing how to do that. Um, if you haven't yet uh, found that, you can access the proposed determination at that link you see on the screen, and the accompanying hydrographic survey survey can also be found at that at that second link that you see on the screen. Um, copies are of the proposed determination are filed with the district court, um, and um, the, uh, the hydrograph hydrographic survey maps. We can we have hard copies at our office that we can provide to you, if you or you can view if needed. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about the proposed determination. Let me just get a little drink for a minute. My uh, my throat gets a little dry in these things. Okay, so the the contents of the proposed determination, um, you, you see just a general layout of everything. We're just gonna we're gonna go through each of these pages one by one. Uh, so this is the title page. There's um, some very important information on this page. There is the, the district court, and it's the third district court that has jurisdiction over this adjudication. And then uh, this page also gives the name of the general adjudication and the civil case number. That civil case number is important. It's in a few different locations on the proposed determination. But if you were to file an objection, you would need to file it um, on this civil number. This is the civil number that describes the little cottonwood um, uh, proposed determination. Um, this is the name, the, uh, the the hydrologic division and the subdivision name, and then this is the area and the book number. We assign um, we assign area and book numbers to each of these each of these subdivisions. Um, so moving along here, this is the notice to water users, and this has again some very important information on there. Again, this is repeated. The the, the civil case number is repeated here and the judge that has jurisdiction over this, uh, Judge Scott. And then um, one of the most important things on this page is instructions on filing an objection. Now, the important takeaway here is that you cannot file this objection with us in our office. This is contrary to how you filed water user claims at the beginning of the process. If you wish to file an objection, that has to be done at the district court, okay? We, we can't take those. and so. We have additional questions on those. Um, we'll tackle those in, in the other room afterwards, but um, key takeaway on this is if you're going to file an objection, that has to be done with the district court with that civil number. Uh, following that is the preamble. Uh, we, we include a lot of general information here, and um, you, you can see a lot of repeated information, civil numbers, and, and names of the adjudication. As you read through this preamble, you'll get to what we call the prior decree section. And for those that have water rights that are part of the Little Cottonwood uh, decree, this, uh, this affects you. And we'll describe, it, it, in effect, it, it describes the, the distribution system that Judge Morse set up in the, in the uh, Little Cottonwood decree. Um, there, are, uh, there is a key difference here. The, um, the Little Cottonwood, uh, this the, the Little Cottonwood Decree is actually spread out, the awards in the Little Cottonwood Decree is spread out between three different books. We uh, made an error in the very first book, the um, East Murray subdivision, in, in how we describe the first and second surplus. Um, we are seeking to amend that, um, that prior decree section, but we have corrected it in this subdivision and in the Fort Union subdivision. And so if you were to do a comparison between those, those three subdivisions, you'd see that 
the Fort Union and the Little Cottonwood Creek uh, subdivisions differ slightly when it comes to the first, first, second, and third surplus descriptions. Um, again, if you have questions on that, we can we can go into the details. It's it's uh, nerdy water right stuff, but um, if it concerns you, we're happy to to describe it to you. Okay, so um, I already alluded to, to this a little bit. Uh, for those that are part of the Little Cottonwood Decree, there it, the Judge Morse um, awarded uh, different flow rates to several different parties or ditch ditches, um, and uh, as we made subdivisions. Uh, for the Little Cottonwood Creek drainage, we broke that into three different subdivisions. And so what you find after looking at that and, and the organization that you can find in our proposed determination is that Brown Ditch was, um, was put into East Murray. And the Fort Union proposed determination includes Tanner, Cahoon and Maxfield, Union Jordan and Walker. And then that leaves everything else that was part of the Little Cottonwood proposed determination that we just published. And so I won't read through all of those, but you can see you can see each of those listed there. Um, so one of the one of the challenges that we had with the Little Cottonwood Decree was quantification. Um, Judge Morris in the Little Cottonwood, Cottonwood Decree um, simply awarded flow rates to each of these ditches. As we sought to incorporate that into a modern water right system, we we uh, we wanted to define beneficial use amounts. And the reason we wanted to do that is it's a fundamental principle of Utah water law that a water right is, is really the, the right to beneficially use and, and consume water. And that is, that is governed by the beneficial uses, what we use it for. So that what, what we, you know, common uses include irrigation, domestic use, stock watering, those type of things. Uh, that was missing from all of the Little Cottonwood Decree. And so we worked to get all of that incorporated in there. And so, um, we had some guiding principles that we applied where this was most significant was in first and second primary water rights. In first primary, um, we were generally able to evaluate existing beneficial use to quantify the water rights, or we, there were on some of them uh, prior certificates of beneficial use that we used to quantify the water, the, the water rights. On second primary, we had to get a little bit more creative. Um, we turned to some historical documents. Uh, we, we looked at change applications that have been filed by different parties. Uh, we also consulted a very key document in our evaluation, and that was the state engineer's 20th biennial report in the 1935 to 36 range, if I remember right. But it, it used evidence and mapping that was done in 1934. And so that's the OW Israelson mapping that I, I make reference to. And so all of that ultimately fed into our recommendations uh, for the second primary water rights. Um, I know there's, there's, there's the surpluses, the surpluses are a little bit different. If you have some of these things, I think you're gonna get into very particular questions or, or details that, that is probably best handled in, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so if you have one of those, we're happy to talk about it. Um, but let's let's go back to the proposed determination. Uh, as you flip your way through it, you'll find a location map. This is the area that was adjudicated. Generally, it's the the uh, the Little Cottonwood Creek drainage from Highland Drive to the east up to the the tops of the mountain tops. And then um, this is the irrigation duty map. So um, it is worth uh, pointing out here that we, in this proposed determination, we've amended the irrigation duty for this area. Um, the, the, effectively, the valley floor is five acre feet per acre. And then once you cross a certain elevation, you cross into a four acre foot per acre um, area. And that we've been um, doing this all up and down the, um, the, the Wasatch Front or in, in Salt Lake Valley. All right, moving along, uh, the the first uh, one of the one of the first more you know more important pages you turn to is is the priority schedule. We're getting into the actual the, the water rights, um, the guts of the proposed determination. What we do here is we list the water rights by source and by priority date. And so let's turn our attention to the Little Cottonwood Creek. There, you can see um, that we list the first primary water rights with 1848 priority dates, and then we move down from there. If you were to turn to the next page and the next page, you would you would work your way through the 
the more junior water rights um, intern. And we describe the water source here, the priority class, the priority date, the flow rate or the volume, the water right number, and the owner of record for this water right. So this is a good way to just quickly get an overview of, of all the water rights that are listed in the proposed determination. Um, let's look at an example page and talk about what you might see here. Um, on every entry for a water right, you'll see the water right number, and then we list the owners and the ownership interest. And then you'll find the type of right and the quantity of water. In this case, it's an application to appropriate, and, and it's 6.6, uh, 6, that's 8.1 acre feet of water. And then moving along, you'll see the priority date and the source listed. And then below that, we, we describe the point of diversion. In this case, it's a, it's a well, an eight inch well, and it gives a depth of 585 feet. And then we, we begin to describe the beneficial uses. And, and this, the, the Divisional Water Rights organize, organizes beneficial uses by water use groups. And so this is the water use group that defines this water right. And um, this water right has irrigation as one of its beneficial uses. This is the period of use for that use. This is the sole supply and then the group total for, for this water right. And then we move on to the place of use. This is the section township and range that this, this water right sits in or is used in. And you'll see uh, that we, we break up, if you're at all familiar with the public land survey system, mile Mile, mile wide squares, mile wide and mile tall squares that are subdivided into quarter sections and quarter quarter sections. And so we describe the place of use um, as pertaining to one of those quarter quarter sections. And so this one has, if you can see that little X that's in the, the northwest of the southwest quarter quarter um, section. And then we describe the, the acreage totals um, for this water right. And then some water rights include a, a general comment. Uh, this will be included when there's a little bit more that we need to say about the water right. Not all water rights have another comment. Uh, moving along, we have um, uh, water rights that were renumbered. Uh, there were a number of, of these that were, just because of um, at different times, water right numbers were created, or, or as we went through the, the proposed determination, we, we felt it made sense to, uh, to put two water rights together, um, perhaps they were duplicative or something like that. And so this lists those, those rights that were renumbered and that lists, lists the old water right number and the new water right number. And moving along, uh, the, next, the next section is the forfeited water rights. As I, as I indicated previously, there, there are a number of water rights that were forfeited in this proposal, or at least is re recommended by the state engineer to be forfeited. And, um, and so that there's a listing there, uh, and they're listed by water right number, by uh, name of the owner of record, and then the point of diversion and source. And then uh, finally at the end, there's an alphabetic index in each water right. This is a good way to interface with it. If you know the name, but you don't know the water right number, this is a good way to find that. Um, you can find the owner of record, the, uh, the source, the water right number, and the page. And I just realized I forgot a key a detail that I like to bring into this. Let, let's talk about this real quick, the, the owner of record. Um, one thing that, we, that is a common misunderstanding is, is uh, you may find that a water right is not listed in the, with the owner, ownership name that you expected. Uh, so we are, the Division of Water Rights is not the Office of Record for Title for Water Right Ownership. Uh, that, that sits with the county recorders. And so we, we publish what we have record of. And so there, there, it is very possible that water rights have been passed from one person to another without that deed being brought to our office and, and shown to us so that we can update our records. And so if you have a situation like that where the water right you have, you know your water right number, but you look at that ownership and and it doesn't match what you, it, doesn't, it isn't what you thought it would be. It could be you, you have some, uh, some title updating that needs to happen. Um, if that describes you, let, let's chat afterwards. Um, grab one of, our, one of our staff members and, and we can, we can um, give you some advice, help, help you understand what you need to do to bring that, the, the water right ownership up to, uh, up to snuff. Okay. 
All right. Um, together with the, um, the proposed determination, we prepare a hydrographic survey map. And there's multiple, multiple different pages. Um, this is a sample of one of the hydrographic survey maps. And um, on this, you can see it's, it's sometimes hard to see. These, these maps are a lot easier to, to, to review once you um, pull the map open on a computer screen and, and you're able to zoom in. But you can see irrigated acreages that are described here. Um, and these correspond to the water use groups that we talked about previously. There's also points of diversion. I don't know if one of our little things talks about it. Nope. Um, there's also points of diversion that are described there. So points of diversion is where you take water from the natural source, whether it's a well or a head gate or, or something like that. And of course, like any map, there's a scale and a north arrow, and there's a map legend, and then a map location. All right, um, so we, we are kind of coming to the close of the um, of this kind of, of the slides here. I, I imagine, you know, there you, you may have questions. We're, we're happy to stay engaged and, and, and talk with you and answer any questions we have. Um, so who can you contact? Um, you can contact me, um, Michael Drake, and that's my phone number and my email address. You can reach me, um, you can also reach Ryan Broadbent, maybe Ryan, raise your hand for those. Ryan Broadbent is uh, the, the engineering manager that oversaw the subdivision. So he's very familiar and, in it, and is my details guy. And so if we need to, we can go to him. There's his phone number and there's his email address. And then um, we do have the general adjudication line. Um, you, can, you can contact and that, that, that phone uh, should be answered most hours of the day. And if not, you can leave a message and it will be to distribute it out to one of the number of people we have working on the adjudication. And then, of course, you can email um, waterrights underscore adjudication at utah.gov. That will um, immediately be forwarded to my email address. Um, so I think we actually have, we could probably take a few questions in this section before we try and vacate this. And maybe we'll try and do it. Do we have people online? We do have some people online. Okay, so maybe if there's questions that people want to ask in, in, you know, in kind of that open forum, that this is maybe let's do that for a, a few minutes, and then we'll um, we'll go ahead and end the recording. And then if people want to stick around, we're happy to answer questions afterwards. So any sort of general questions that anyone has, we can bounce back in the slides if we want to. Also, also. yes, ma'am. Yeah, let me go back here and just talk about that slide. I uh, I jumped over over a little bit of the the, the details and the a uh, little bit of the storytelling that I do sometimes. Um, so uh, obviously, if you know if you know your your well, my my wife's a fourth grade teacher, and so she teaches Utah history. And of course, if you're going to teach Utah history, you, you know you you include when the pioneers came into the valley. So they came in in, in 1847, right? Days of 47 parade and everything all. And um, it wasn't until 18 um, 1897 that the the state was that Utah became a state. And so that's 50 years of water development that was happening prior to that, right? And so one of the key provisions of the Constitution. Of the Utah Constitution is it recognized all of those pre-existing uses of water, and it said that they were they were they were valid uses of water, um, even though so the state of Utah didn't became a state in, in 1897. It wasn't until 1903 that the first water laws were brought onto the books, and so Utah water law views any use of water prior to 1903 as being what's called pre-statutory before the laws came onto the books. So if you came in and established a use of water prior to that, then it's a, and you've continued to use water, that, that water, then it is a valid water right. Now that, that is something that, you know, through the course of the adjudication, you would have had to have made a claim. We're way past that point. And so um, that, but that, that is what a pre-statutory water right is, is a right that's established prior to the Utah water law coming into play.
Um, waterline, probably not. This would more likely be like, you know, whoever built the house in 18 whatever um, diverted water from a spring and used it and has continued to use that water. So that would be a more likely scenario in that case. If there's a water line, water lines really didn't get put in until you know, the 1900s, and so kind of a different scenario. Yeah. If we need to talk about your, you know, your, your question in more detail, we're happy to do that. We can, we can investigate with that with you. Any other questions that we want to do here? Yes? Yeah. So in that, um, I guess, six and seven, you know, kind of a general question for me to help you think. If anything was filed during that portion of the process related to the claim, and it's, what, what's, how is that followed up? How does that then end up as a uh, proposal? So any claim that any timely claim that we received, we we moved it right on through to number eleven claim investigation, and then it's handled one way or another, whether we investigated it and recommended it in the proposed determination, or if we didn't see it, maybe we recommended it to be forfeited. So if you if a claim came in during that claim filing period, we investigated it and we made a recommendation in this. Most recent proposed determination. So, in the water rights where it lists claimant, but it doesn't list them as the owner, what's the status of that water right? So, all right, so if it's, say that again, so. So, your example didn't show, I guess, the sex abuse or some particular water right to put it on that spot, but it will list that person claimant on that water right? Well, we won't, we won't include claimants in, in the proposed determination. We published the owner of record. Whoever has most recently came in and updated title to that water right, that's who will publish the water right in the name of. There might be other people that claimed the water right, that, and that's true. But um, it, you, you need to come into the division with, with the deeds and file what's called a report of conveyance update the ownership information with our office so that we can portray the, the appropriate owner. So it's not shown as the proposed determination. Now that once it's process, that's not through your office? No, well, it is, but, but it may involve others. Um, um, presumably and hopefully there's deeds to describe how that water was conveyed from one person to another to another. You would assemble that chain of title. This might involve a, a title professional or an attorney that you would turn to. And then you would come in and prepare a, a form. It's called the report of conveyance form that demonstrates to us and provides to us those deeds so that we can then trace ourselves back to the owner that we have presently. And that'll let us update it into the new owner's name, if that makes sense. Yeah. Question is what happens when your PG tells someone to the owner who doesn't have a PG or any driver? Okay. Yeah, very good question. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, so the, the question was was actually like the reverse is where the proposed determination shows an owner that has not demonstrated title. Um, excellent question. Uh, we have, be, because of the, the scarcity of, of information, we've had to just make, make do with the best that we, that, that we have, the records we have. And so there are places in this proposed determination where we've, um, you know, we, We've used the information in front of us, and we've just made, made taken the best shot we can, expecting that if uh, the, that if there's a need to correct that, that can be done, whether it's through a separate quiet title action or through a separate set of deeds that will correct the record. And so we're we're kind of just taking our best shot and, and moving along. No, nope. 
Yeah, there's no deadlines for updating ownership. And I think Ryan was trying to say that there's ownership, ownership updates don't have to be done in this 90 day period. Um, you that can be done at any point in the future. Yeah, it, and, and so Ryan indicated that if, if title is incorrect, it that that's you you can object about, um, um, based on that, um, and so you, you can object on on any any part of the proposed determination. Um, again, we we took we took our best shot on this. It was a very complicated book with a lot of um, intertwined pieces, and so we we made the the best of of the the records that we had. Any other questions now? Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and close, and we'll um, we'll we'll say goodbye to the people that are online. Thank you for for attending. If you have questions, uh, please reach out to. Let me get to the end here. Please reach out to any of these these ways of of contacting us, and we can we can answer your questions. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining us. Okay.